Yeah, hi, this is Tom here from Vintage Blues Guitars, and I just want to talk a little bit about this guitar, this unusual guitar, I guess. It's called a Tonk American. You can see it on the headstock, and the Tonk Brothers was a, a known guitar seller back in the day, back in the 20s and 30s. And this particular one looks like to be about a, a 30s vintage. Now, a couple of unusual things about this guitar. The first thing is that when you look at the sound hole, you can see a sort of oval shaped, which is pretty unusual for a guitar of this era. And the other thing that's really unusual about this is that it's a 14 fret slot head guitar, which uh, in my opinion is pretty rare because uh, the only guitars I can think of from those days are like the 14 fret nationals from the mid 30s that have the slot head in that transition time. So this is a, a 12 frets here, and of course it joins here. pick up a guitar, one of the first things I do is I want to give it a nice strum. I usually strum an open G like that. And I can usually get some idea of the tone quality of the guitar, and hopefully that comes through on your speakers. Uh, the other thing I like to look at is the originality of the guitar. And when I look at this piece, it looks pretty original to me. I, there's nothing that comes to my mind. I did make a new compensated saddle here. But the bridge appears original. It looks like it's uh, looks like Brazilian rosewood with the probably the original white pins. There's a black raised Bakelite pickcard, which is uh, reminiscent of the uh, arch tops that were made in those days. And of course, Bakelite is an unusual uh, plastic that I don't even know if they make it anymore. And that appears to be original. You see, it matches the uh, profile of the sound hole. Uh, looks like the tuners are all original. The original buttons. The headstock's in really nice clean condition with that gold Tonk American on it. Very little wear. You can see the back of the neck has very little wear on that. Very smooth and sleek. The neck joint looks good. There's no evidence of it ever having a uh, neck reset. Uh, you can see the back is very clean. There's minimal wear up in here. And you can see a big one piece of grain here that, you know, at first glance you think birch, but after looking at this, I might even call this ash. A big piece of ash, uh, possibly birch, same with the sides. And of course it's bound on the fingerboard, it's bound on the top, and it's bound on the back, which makes it a pretty nice mid-range style uh, guitar appointments. The other thing that's really nice about this guitar is it has a, a really clean ebony fingerboard and the frets are virtually unplayed. So uh, that's a nice feature as well. The really, really cool thing about this guitar, and I just couldn't believe it when I saw it, is that this old, uh, probably Anirondack red spruce top has the tightest grain I've ever seen in a, in a flat top guitar. Uh, I, I think I counted the grain lines per inch, and it's, it's pushing 25, 30 grain lines per inch. In fact, it almost doesn't look like spruce because the grain is so tight there. So it probably helps with that, with that nice uh, projecting sound that it makes. Um, the other thing about the guitar is there are no cracks. Top has no cracks, sides have no cracks, and the back has no cracks. So it's a really solid, all original 30s vintage guitar. Uh, it has a good sound, it plays well. The action is probably middle to high, I would say, and probably in years to come this would be a candidate for a neck reset. But it is very playable uh, in finger style. <laughs> Quickly, 